Dear students, in this session we are going to discuss about components of food. In the last session we were discussing about the nutrition, different types of nutrition, such things we discussed. In this session we will discuss about the components of food. So what is food? That is something which is essential for the growth of all organisms. And the deficiency may lead to different uh, uh, diseases and developmental problems in the body. And there is a definite amount of each constituent of food required by the body. And this is provided by the diet to maintain the health of the body. And the most important components, not most important, the major components of food are carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, water and fiber. And these constituents that they fulfill the, fulfill the caloric requirements of our body and provide building material for the tissue of our body and control the metabolic activity of the body and every constant that we uh, uh, listed above is important in its own way that is the carbohydrates fats proteins vitamins minerals water and fiber all are important in its own way now outline classification of foodstuffs Foods can be major uh, can be divided into three major groups that is energy providing foods, growth pro promoting foods and protective foods. So this is how it is divided most often energy providing foods, growth promoting foods and protective foods. So energy providing foods they provide the necessary calories for body functions, the necessary energy for the body functions and all three major classes of food that is the carbohydrates lipids and proteins provide energy for the body uh, so all these three classes can provide energy but the main sources of energy or the calories energies are always counted in calories so the main sources of energies among these three are the carbohydrates and fats only when the body cannot obtain energy from carbohydrates and fats it starts using protein as energy source and growth promoting foods are foods which are rich in proteins they are known as growth promoting foods the other one was what energy providing foods growth promoting foods are foods which are rich in proteins they promote the growth of the body the growth of the cells then certain minerals such as calcium and phosphorus are also considered as growth promoting factors because among the minerals they are required in relatively large amounts for example calcium phosphate is a principal component of bones as well as teeth so they are required in large amounts so they are also considered some of the mineral components are also considered as growth promoting factors and protective foods are also known as regulators of the body these are food which furnish minerals and vitamins they are known as protective foods those foods which provide minerals and vitamins on of the, uh, to the body and they are also known as regulators they provide immunity help the help to protect the body from diseases as well as they regulate several body processes they are known as protective foods so we now saw the three classes of uh, 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 foods that, or the three major groups of foods that is energy providing foods growth promoting foods and protective foods we discussed what are these that is what are energy providing foods what are growth promoting foods and what are protective fruits protective fruits mainly minerals and vitamins they regulate body functions so they are also known as regulators then these vitamins they are organic compounds they are critically important in uh, nutritional requirements and these vitamins they are required only in very small amounts also and these are many of these vitamins are not synthesized by they are not at all synthesized by an animals we require it in diet but some of the vitamins some of the vitamins are uh, um, produced by the bacteria which are present inside the gut so um, actually this vitamin should be present in our diet except these vitamins which are produced by bacteria that is not that necessary uh, we this bacteria synthesize it in our gut and we can body can absorb it from there but the most of the vitamins we should absorb it from the food itself food that we eat 
and also the minerals that should also that is minerals are also having very many important physiological functions so this minerals should also be obtained from diet and the water and refuge what about that they are also important components of food water is the most vital dietary requirement of the body and it is essential for all the uh, functions of the body you know the major um, uh, the uh, weight uh, of the body is water Bo body is consistent the major part of the body is water and water is required for all the activities in the body for all the function metabolic processes in the body water is required so it is a very essential component in, of food then roughage roughage of the dietary fiber that is also an important component of the food because this uh, what is this roughage it is uh, the food component which reaches the large intestine without much undergoing any change that is without undergoing any digestion they are known as roughage or dietary fiber our body cannot digest this food substance or this component of food and that reaches without dig uh, digestion into the large intestine and it mainly comprises of cellulose semicellulose lignin mucilages pectins etc and why they are necessary because they are important uh, or to facilitate bubble movements and for defecation only if there is proper bubble movement the uh, the defecation will be proper otherwise there will be constipation and the organism cannot defecate properly so this is the classification of food stuffs energy providing foods growth promoting foods protective foods water roughage or dietary fiber energy providing foods are carbohydrates lipids and proteins growth promoting foods proteins and some minerals such as calcium and phosphate protective foods vitamins minerals and certain proteins then there is water then roughage or dietary fiber that is cellulose hemicellulose lignin mucilages and pectins these are the uh, broad classification of food stuffs about water water is the most vital component of food it is required by the body every day so this is a vital substance and this water make up around 70 percentage of the body uh, by body weight and we take the bo body weight 70 percentage is water and the water there are two types of water intracellular water and extracellular water inside the body okay there are two types intracellular and extracellular water water present inside the cell is known as intracellular water and it constitute about 50 percentage of the total body weight the intracellular water it is it constitute 50 percentage of the total body weight and it exists in two two forms free water and bound water okay this uh, uh intracellular water that exists as free water as well as bound water and this bound water um, uh, of the uh, of the total intracellular water 95 percentage is free water and 5 percentage is bound water what is bound water bound water it is uh, that water which remains in chemical composition uh, chemical combination with cellular biomolecules that is known as bound water okay then next is extracellular water that is the water which is found outside the cells outside the cells okay not inside the cell outside the cells and that includes plasma interstitial and limb fluids dense connective tissue cartilage bone transcellular fluids then secretions of the glands cerebrospinal fluid intraocular fluid pericardial fluid pleural fluid synovial fluid so all the water which is present in these uh, Uh, matters are extracellular water next major sources of water for the body what are the major sources of water for the body drinking water as well as metabolic water these are the major sources of water for the body next is about carbohydrates so carbohydrates they are one of the major components of food carbohydrates energy providing food one of the major energy providing food which are the other energy providing foods proteins as well as fats and among them proteins are used by the body to uh, provide energy only in the absence of carbohydrates and fats so 
carbohydrates we see them in mainly three these three different forms that is sugars starches fiber these are the three main uh, foods carbohydrate foods that three main types of carbohydrates that we find in foods sugars starches fibers sugars can be there are different types of sugars you know the lactose sucrose fructose galactose all these are sugars and they are as well as they are carbohydrates then starches are all starches are also carbohydrates then fiber there are two types of fiber insoluble fiber and soluble fiber insoluble fiber which adds bulk to your stools that is we already discussed that is which do not undergo much uh, undergo digestion and it reaches likewise into the uh, large intestine and it adds bulk to the stool or the fecus so that the bowel movements are proper and defecation is proper then what is soluble fiber these are fiber which help to lower cholesterol level in the body sugars starch fiber what are the main sources of this carbohydrates in our body fruits vegetables table sugar honey milk products cereals yeah, these are the main sources of carbohydrates for the body lactose is present only in milk this sugar this particular sugar lactose it is present only in milk then starches it is present in cereals root tubers stem tubers then uh, fibers fibers are not broken down by the body they are required for the smooth passage of food through the colon and high fiber foods uh, examples are whole grains then two types there is insoluble fiber and soluble fiber next about the lipids okay lipids are also sometimes we uh, use the term fat fat contains lipids so foods high in fat here are some, some foods are given which is high in fat or lipids fatty meats and fish cheese butter avocado nuts and seeds chocolate this contain high amount of lipids look at these products also milk butter cheese eggs so this lipid it is 40 percentage of the organic matter body's organic matter they account for about 40 percentage of the body's organic matter okay and uh, what is this uh, lipid why uh, important it contains more ch bonds okay, it contains more ch bonds and it yield more energy when compared to carbohydrates and proteins it yield more energy carbohydrates yield 4 kilocalorie per gram proteins also yield 4 kilocalorie per gram but lipids yield 9.3 kilocalorie per gram approximately we sometimes in certain textbooks it is referred as 9 kilocalorie per gram okay um and we say it specifically 9.3 kilocalorie per gram and we can see it in three forms simple lipids compound lipids and derived lipids okay simple lipids example triglycerols uh, then uh, it is not uh, uh, triglycerols then um, compound lipids phospholipids glycolipids etc and derived lipids such as steroids fat soluble vitamins alcohol etc so in these three forms we can see lipids so simple lipids are the simplest ones then the complex next complex compound lipids and the again complex one that is the derived lipids what are the functional role of lipids in the body the lipids are having certain functional roles important functional roles in the body it is an important component of food we require lipids or fats for our normal functioning of the body so the first thing is that they act as a reserve food these lipids act as reserve food then another thing is that they are the integral component of plasma membrane and other membrane structures Where, wherever there is membrane there is this lipid you know the basic structure of membrane is what But lipid bilayer we explain the membrane uh, structure membrane structure as lipid bilayer okay it is lipid bilayer so wherever there is membrane there is this lipids and you know all the all our cells for all our cells there is a membrane cell membrane or we call it the plasma membrane so this lipids are an integral component of the plasma membrane then the fat stored fat that is the uh, lipid itself fat stored beneath the skin help to conserve heat 
it will help to prevent heat loss from the body then phospholipid coating known as myelin sheath around the neurons that insulate the neurons electrically then also this vitamins not vitamins lipids are raw materials for the synthesis of fat soluble vitamins steroids etc next about proteins proteins so proteins they are the building blocks of the body okay they are the building blocks they are the growth promoting food we earlier told that i earlier told that growth promoting food major growth promoting food is protein so they are the building blocks of our body and every cell contains protein and it is for protein the basic structure is a chain of amino acids whatever protein we take the basic structure is a chain of amino acids and the important sources of proteins in our food is meat milk fish eggs butter cheese pulses nuts oil seeds etc and there are 20 different types of amino acids i told you any protein we take they are the 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 basic structure is a chain of amino acids and there are 20 difference of amino acids that make up protein essential amino acids non essential amino acids and conditional amino acids what are essential amino acids these are amino acids which cannot be made by our body they are known as essential amino acids examples are isoleucine leucine methionine phenylalanine threonine tryptophan valine etc so since they are not cannot be made by our body they are indispensable in diet they must be essentially obtained from the food because our body cannot make it so we need to obtain this essential amino acids from the food and deficiency in one or more of these essential amino acids will result in certain diseases certain serious growth abnormalities certain physiological abnormalities okay so these are very essential in our food then non essential amino acids these non essential amino acids are made by the body means made by the body from other raw materials that the body take from the food like uh, the body can make them from essential amino acids or the body can make them from the proteins uh, that uh, is in the diet they are known as non essential amino acids so they are no, the examples are alanine cysteine glutamine tyrosine ornithine proline etc then again the proteins are divided into complete proteins partially complete proteins and incomplete proteins what are complete proteins complete proteins contain all essential amino acids those proteins which contain all essential amino acids are known as complete proteins examples may be eggs milk meat etc then what is partially complete proteins they lack one or more essential acids they are known as partially complete proteins they do not contain all the essential amino acids um so here the proteins from plant source they can be considered as partially complete proteins because the proteins from plant source may be lacking in one or two essential amino acids this classification is mainly based on the presence of essential amino acids in the in that uh, food okay these are uh, in the protein in the proteinaceous food okay that's how this complete proteins partially complete proteins and incomplete proteins this classification is mainly based on the presence of essential amino acids so main what may be incomplete proteins they lack many essential amino acids so and they do not promote growth at all uh, if you are solely taking that uh, protein that do not promote growth such uh, uh, a protein is known as incomplete proteins for example gelatin gelatin is an incomplete protein next is about minerals so 4% of body weight in humans is the minerals okay 4% body weight in humans constitute minerals and the often we refer these minerals as dietary minerals because these minerals we obtain through diet through eating uh, through uh, our diet means by eating several food substances that's how we uh, the body procure this minerals so they are known as dietary minerals 
So what are these dietary minerals? These are chemical elements required by the body other than the four major elements that is carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. Other than these major elements, the chemical elements that the body require. They are known as dietary minerals. So there are two types, macro elements and micro elements. <coughs> what are macro elements? These are... Uh, uh, also known as major elements. Macro elements are also known as major elements and we require them in abundance when compared to other minerals. They are known as macro minerals. Example, sodium, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, chlorine, sulfur, potassium. These are macro elements. Then what are micro elements? When compared to macro elements, we require these elements in minute quantities. So they are known as micro elements. They are also known as minor elements or trace elements. Examples are iron, zinc, boron, molybdenum, nickel, iodine, manganese, cobalt, copper. Okay. And each mineral is having its specific function and it plays vital role in metabolic processes. And if there is deficiency in any one of these minerals, it leads to diseases, various deficiency diseases. Then vitamins. So vitamins, these are organic compounds that organisms require in limited amounts. Okay, they, the organisms require these components only in limited amounts, but they play a very important role in the body. They are considered as regulators. Minerals as vitamins, both are considered as regulators in the body. They regulate several functions, metabolic functions in the body. And most vitamins are obtained from food. And some of the vitamins are synthesized by the bacteria in the gut. So, a detailed account of these vitamins will be discussed in another session. Next about calorie, the term calorie. What is calorie? Calorie is the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. That is known as calorie. Okay. And the calories in food provide energy in the form of heat so that our bodies can function. So our bodies store and burn. We can uh, tell like that. We can say like our bodies store and burn calories while eating food. By eating food. So calories provide energy. Calories in the food provide energy. It is the energy source for the body. So, sometimes we write it as simply as calorie CAL and sometimes we uh, write it as kilocalorie KCAL. What is a calorie? It is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. And what is kilocalorie? It is the amount of energy required to raise 1 kilogram of water by 1 degree Celsius. Okay, that is known as kilocalorie. And 1 kilocalorie is equal to 1000 calorie. And not everybody needs the same number of calories each day. This food is, uh, the food is uh, nowadays explained in terms of calories. When we take a particular food type, how much calories it contains. If we take an apple, how much calorie it contains. If we take an egg, how much calorie it contains. If we take a burger, how much calorie it contains. Okay, that's how we explain foodstuffs now. And no, not everyone requires the same number of calories every day because people are having different metabolisms, different types of metabolisms in the body. Okay, so there are different rate and the people are in, uh, in people, different metabolisms that burn energy at different rates are there. Not all will be having the same metabolic rate. Okay, so the energy requirement will also be differing and also according to the lifestyle according to the work a person is doing the person may require different levels of energy and the recommended intake of calories per day depends on factors such as overall general general health physical activity demands then sex weight height body shape Sex with that is whether female or male. Males may require more uh, calories because their physical activity may be more. It's, it may be because 
and several other, uh, and because of certain other uh, what physical differences in the body of males and females they may require more calories and according to the uh, physical demands means the work the person is doing if the person is uh, physically um, doing hard work the person may require more calories then according to the weight and height the person who is having more weight and height may require more calorie likewise so from person to person the calorie requirement may be differing and human body needs calories to survive because this and uh, it is the calories present in food which is providing energy to our body to do all the metabolic functions and without this energy the cells in the body would die and people absorb this energy from food and drink from food and the fluid that they drink and if the calorie consumption is too high or too low both cases in both cases it will eventually lead to health problems and about the calorific values of the main components of food 1 g of carbohydrates contains 4 kilocalorie 1 g of protein contains 4 kilocalorie 1 g of fat contains 9 kilocalorie or um, specifically 9.3 kilocalorie approximately 9 kilocalorie for example we can see as an example uh, we can take the uh, calorie content in x okay here is the breakdown of how a person would get calories from one cup of large x being 243 g okay one person is eating a cup of large x and that is the weight of x is 243 g and from this 243 g fat accounts 23.11 g okay in this 243 g 23.11 is fat and that would yield calories 207.99 kilocalories then protein is 30.52 g in this 243 g and that would yield 122.08 kilocalories and in this 243 g carbohydrate accounts 1.75 g and that would yield calories 7 kilocalories here this in egg pro, uh, carbohydrate is low it is a high protein uh, fat and proteins are high in x carbohydrate is low that we can understand from this uh, calorie chart of uh, this x being 243 grams so 243 gram of raw egg contains 347 total 347 kilo calories and if uh, of this 347 kilo calories 208 kilo calorie comes from fat 122 kilo calorie comes from protein and 7 kilo calorie from carbohydrate next about balanced diet what is balanced diet balanced diet is a diet in which we include all the include food stuffs which provide all the required components of food okay all the required we get all the required of required components of food in uh, correct quantities from the food that we are including in the diet that is known as balanced diet balanced diet is a diet that contains different kinds of food in certain quantities and proportions so that requirement for calories proteins minerals vitamins and alternative nutrients is adequate and a small provision is reserved also okay small provision is kept for reserved as a reserved amount in the body only small not a large amount when we keep large amount um, when for res as reservation reserved food in the body that may lead to disease only a few uh, uh, low amount of food should be considered as reserve okay otherwise it may lead to uh, health problems by accumulating this extra food extra energy in the body in various forms like proteins in mainly it will keep building up in the form uh, in the body in the form of fat so this is balanced diet 
so i close here uh, any doubts you are having you can uh, uh, ask me through whatsapp or also you can message in the um, moodle thank you